What are we doing tonight, Brain? Uh, same thing we do every night, Pinky. Suffer. Suffer for our viewers. Suffer for all of you. We're just here to fucking suffer. Anyway. So, welcome to Shitface Shitfix. And, uh, as, as I, as I start, I'm going to give you a little bit of background on the story we're reading today. Today, we are reading a story called Dipper Goes to Taco Bell. Now, barcasters, if you need to go get a drink while I give you a little bit of background about this story, please go get a drink. This is, I, I am not looking forward to it. This, this is going to be suffering. Uh, Enigma, Flam, Priest, you guys need to get drinks? I have a full uh, bottle next to me. Yeah, I'm just of, of, of whiskey. Priest, Unless need anyone needs to piss. Yeah, if anyone needs to piss, go ahead. Do you need a puke bucket, Priest? I don't know. I'm completely, like, uh, blind to this story. What, what, what makes this story so special, Pencil? I forgot to talk about is known as the most distressing uh, Gravity Falls fan fiction ever to be birthed into existence. It is it is so well known for its awfulness that it was even mentioned and alluded to by Alex Hirsch in Gravity Falls Media. So he at least is he at least knows about its existence. But here here's the catch. If you look up Dipper Goes to Taco Bell, you're going to find a lot of people talking about it. You're going to find references to it. You're going to find quotes from it, but you're not going to find the actual story. Because it's mostly been removed from the internet. That is, until one day I found someone who had reposted it to their private stuff in a uh, Reddit post. And I tracked it down, and now here we have it in its full entirety of 5,000 words. Unedited as it was before it was released. Now, you don't want to listen to this fic. Uh, this fic has, it has blood. It has gore. It has sex. It has children being dismembered. It has feces. It has urine, I think, too, at some point. It has, it has uh, Dipper and Mabel and awful things happening to them and around them. And it has, it has, it's just, it's bad. It's, it's got everything. Anyway. Uh, this is gonna be, this has every trigger under the sun, extreme content, if you're not up for extreme content, please don't go past this point, I am giving you full warning, there'll be, there'll be a written warning at the beginning of this episode, and hopefully you will hear this warning before we start. Now's your chance. Turn around. Go away. Nope. You're still here? Alright, then welcome to Dipper Goes to Taco Bell. Today, your narrator will be Flutter Priest. Hi. I will be playing Mabel. Dipper will be played by Flam. No idea how he sounds like, so I'm just gonna make it up as I go along. He's he's a child. He is he is a young boy child who sounds like he is in his late teens, despite being very small. Gotcha. I'm gonna. I'll, I'll, I can work with that. Have fun. Um, Stan, Seuss, and any others randomly will be played um, by Enigma. All I wanna do is see you turn into a giant woman. Please don't. And uh, the man, the Taco Bell man, will also be played by a Flam Inverter. <laughs> this is not this is not a person in the show, Flam. Just good luck. You 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 just just good luck, okay? Good Sounds luck. good. All right. Um, does everyone have the story up? I'm ready. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh. Priest, read us in. Go ahead and uh, put the posters a uh, little forward there and the author and everything and just let's let's do this. This pick is rated M.A. for... I'm not going to say My that. Ass. Um, this is Dipper Goes to Taco Bell, a Gravity Falls fan fiction. Author, original author is Masta of Ta Citrus Fruits. Summary... Dipper decides to go to the town's Taco Bell and eat a lunch he will never forget. It was a normal day in Gravity Falls, Oregon. Well, as normal as Gravity Falls gets, anyways. Dipper Pines was reading his book, and Mabel, his twin sister, was wondering what he was doing. Dip Dipper? 
Are you going to keep your nose buried in that strange book of yours all summer? You gotta go out and have an adventure! Mabel exclaimed. Not now, Dipper said quietly. I'm trying to decode this. Actually, that's not that bad. <laughs> he was looking at a cryptogram that said... Uh, no, go. anyone can yell that. Go ahead. Dipper was officially stumped. He could not figure out what it meant, and it seemed very mysterious to him. Uncle Stan is gonna take us to the diner for lunch, Dipper! Mabel exclaims. Dipper, however, was not in the mood for the diner. He was publicly humiliated the last time he went, and he thugged the food wasn't very good anyway. Mabel, I don't want to go to dinner. Diner. Diner? Oh, to the diner. Dipper said sol solemnly. I want to go somewhere else. More voice cracky, less less disgruntled. You sound actually like another character named Robbie, just letting you know, Flam. Oh, okay. <laughs> <coughs> There's really nothing else in this town, unless you count the Taco Bell near the forest. Mabel replied. Taco Bell? Dipper's ears perked up. He had never eaten a Taco Bell before, and ever since last week, he had had a craving for Mexican food for some reason. Why don't we go to Taco Bell today? Dipper asked. Taco Bell? Grunkle Stan questioned. Why'd you want to go there? Smells like the bathroom when it gets clogged. I had my heart set on pancakes. Mabel moaned. Listen, you can go to Taco Bell if you want to, but don't come crying to me when you smell like expired onions. Fine, I will, Dipper said harshly. Don't let the door hit you on the way out, Grunkle Stan said. But as he was exiting the mystery shack, the door hit him on the way out. <laughs> said Grunkle Stan. He was laughing. So anyways, Mabel and Grunkle Stan went to the diner while Dippo, Dipper, tried to find the Taco Bell. He had brought with him his book and a couple bucks, but finding the Taco Bell was harder than he had previously thought. He had been looking around town for what seemed like days. The Mr. Roo book wasn't helping him either, until he saw a flicker of a sign in the forest. He went into the forest. Would there be a Taco Bell in the forest? Dipped asked himself. After hiking for about an hour, Dipper finally got to the Taco Bell. But it sure didn't look like any Taco Bell he'd ever seen. It was surrounded by a barrage of giant oak trees in an open field, completely different from the rugged terrain of the Oregon forest. The open field was covered with at least three levers three layers of pine needles, which got the attention of Dipper. He struck, he stuck his hand into the pine needles. Ow! Dipper shouted. A pine needle poked him. It hurts. Jesus Christ. The restaurant, Taco Bell, looked like a silo, sort of. Well, it was very cylindrical. The outside had rusty picnic tables, which looked like no one used them at all. Dipper walked up to the restaurant's door. Should I go in there? Dipper asked himself. I'm starting to have second thoughts. Why is there a small, desolate Taco Bell in this forest, miles from the nearest road? But I guess it's my only option. Mabel and Grunkle Stan are probably done with lunch right now. And they were. Mabel wondered why Dipper hadn't come back yet. But Grunkle Stan didn't give a damn. So Dipper entered the restaurant, but he was relieved to see that the interior was normal, except for its high ceiling. There were also no customers inside, but Dipper thought that was normal, considering how the franchise was so isolated. He went up to the counter. There was only one cashier working the registers, a very old, slightly deaf, bored out of his skull, cashier. Be played by Enigma. 
Dipper decided what he wanted to order, then approached the register. Excuse me, I'll have... We've only got tacos! The cashier interrupted. Okay, I, uh, I guess I'll have a taco then. Diaper said. What'd you say? The cashier yelled. I said I want taco! Dipper okay, yelled then. back. Okay, then. The cashier said. <laughs> then went in the back for a few minutes. When he came out, he was carrying Dipper's taco. That'll be one dollar. Read, read what it actually says. I did. Nope. No. That'll one dollar. There you go. <laughs> the cashier said. Dipper gave him the money and then went to sit down at the least grimiest table. He bit into the hot, spicy, juicy taco filled with thick, pure meat, mild, tantalizing black beans, and sour, fluffy sour cream. He enjoyed the single bite of that perfectly cooked taco and still tasted it in his mouth after he swallowed it. But as he was about to bite into it a second time, he felt a churning movement inside his body, something that he had felt often. Uh-oh, Dipper said, and then rushed to find the lavatory. Man, that really went through me, Dipper said to himself. For some reason, the bathrooms were hidden in a corner, far from the counter, and far from the table he was sitting at. When he walked in, he found that the bathrooms were surprisingly clean, for a fast food restaurant anyway, and Dipper found this suspicious. And all of the stalls were full. No one was using the urinals. But right on cue, someone walked out of one of the stalls. Dipper didn't pay much attention to who was walking out, but he was wearing all black and had a plastic bag with him. Dipper just had to go. Unfortunately, unfortunately, he didn't make it in time. He checked his pants and found the worst of all. Diarrhea, Dipper said. Yeah. <laughs> He was about to leave the stall when he noticed a bulge in his pants. It begins. He, oh no. <laughs> he touched the bulge, and once he touched it, he knew exactly what it was. It was an erection. He had found himself aroused after touching it, and he started to do it some more. Eventually, he found himself... He was ready... Eventually, he was, yeah. <laughs> Eventually, he was ready to hardcore masturbate. He didn't know what was arousing him. And he knew he was aroused. He took off his blue shorts and his soiled underwear, revealing his medium-sized but not small penis. The tip was bright and red like Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Dipper started to yank his Johnson harder and faster. The five-incher was getting pumped. Dipper's soiled hands were starting to feel bits of pre-cum on his dry fingers. Ed, your story's getting weird. Eventually, the medium-sized dick couldn't take it anymore, and burst in an explosion of cum. The cum got up. My Roomba apparently had things to say about that. <laughs> well, what did it say? It was the idea of cum getting all over the walls. <laughs> the cum got over the all over the walls and toilet, and Dipper felt proud. He had creamed himself for the first time. But he was upset that it was not over Wendy. Yeah, this is this is where we're at. <laughs> no, Dipper thought. All this is not enough for me. I need to release all of this. With his erection still active, Dipper began yanking his penis again. It was much quicker, and Dipper cummed quicker. That rhymed. That was kind of... Well, it is quicker and quicker. It was a bigger release than the last time and it began to rain Dipper's seed. Dipper felt more proud than last time. His heart was about to burst from all the droplets of cum raining down from the ceiling. He felt as happy as he felt on the first on the day of the first snowfall of the year. I'd he like to think that the whole staff of Gravity Falls read this together. They might have, but maybe not. It gets worse. He stuck out his tongue to task the cum, shiny from the faulty fluorescent lighting in the bathroom. He tasted it, and he thought it was one of the best-tasting things in the world. 
Better than the largest chocolate bar. Better than the rarest pig. Better than the taco he was having earlier. By now, he couldn't stop. He couldn't leave now and miss out on this great masturbation adventure. He wanted to taste the cum. He scraped a handful of it off the stall and put it in his dirty, wet mouth. How you doing, priest? Uh, I had a little burp, but I'm doing pretty good. It's gonna get worse, priest. I'm ready. Okay. He scraped a handful of it off of the stall and put it in his dirty, wet mouth. He grabbed another, and another, and another. He was getting more aroused by consuming the cum, and he released another load. So that's where it's all coming from, Dipper said to himself, cum all over his face and teeth. Dipper came up with a solution to get a more hardcore adult masturbation ex experience. He was going to put it into action. He tilted his head down and sat down on the cum-covered ground and grabbed his hardened Johnson and stuck it in his mouth. <laughs> Once it was firmly in, Dipper began to suck on the very hard rod. He sucked it like the lollipop he got from the county fair a while back. It tastes a lot like it, too. His legs were so expertly over his shoulder that he could have been a gymnast. The more he sucked on his hard dick, the more aroused legs the more his aroused legs shook. Eventually, just when he was going to give out, he came in his mouth. It was the best thing he ever experienced. He kept performing fellatio on himself. As he was stimulating himself orally, he accidentally fell over to his side. He broke from his penis and cummed on the floor. The floor was covered in so much of Dipper's cum that it started to make a snow angel in the cum. Or a cum angel. He was eating some in the process. But then, he looked to his side and immediately became so hard that the red tip was touching his short pubic hair. He saw what was covering it. Was causing it. He saw what was causing it. He saw his underwear. Covered in dark brown feces. Yep. He held up his underwear, which was covered in the cum-filled floor, and marveled at its erotic beauty. The feces were so beautifully ejaculated. <laughs> yep, that's what it says. So smooth and it's... <laughs> it says that. The feces were so beautifully ejaculated. So smooth in its sticky brownness. So perfect. They felt in Dipper's white hands. He wanted his shit. <laughs> he held the brown underwear like a fish on a lure and put his sticky light white lips into the sticky brown feces. This is a weird mason. It gets weirder. His tongue was rubbing the crap all over his tidy whites, making his mouth all a brownish white mess. He was biting into the shit and sucked it in his mouth. It was more stimulating than ever before. He now knew he didn't need Wendy, or Mabel, or any of the other girls in Gravity Falls. All he needed was a big pile of his shit. He talked a scoop of the feces. He had a lot of diarrhea. And began to spread it over his dick. Every time he spread the crap, he was getting more and more aroused. Someone's fapping to this. Like, right now. I'm realizing this, and now I'm a little disgusted. What? what one of our viewers, you think? Someone is going to find this on YouTube, and is going to be, like, pornography for them, and I'm having a little bit of an existential crisis right now. So someone's fapping you're, to you're, you are You are dramatically reading this story for them to fap to, Priest. Accept this, and continue. Okay. Make, make, say, some, make some different voices for them. Yeah, say, say hi to them. No, no. I'm fine without the voices. Just say hi to them. Wish them well. If if you fap to this, leave a comment, smash that subscribe, and ring the bell. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <sighs> Once his dick was completely brown, he came again. It filled up all the spots in the stall that weren't covered in dippers cum. 
Once again, Dipper took big scoops of cum and consumed it in large gulps. The other stalls filled, apparently. So there's other people witnessing this monstrosity happening right now. Now, his beautiful brown genitals needed to be cleaned. But Dipper didn't have any cleaning supplies. I so he had... Skipped, uh, I... Really? I think you skipped the uh, above. Oh, God. Okay. It, there's worse, and you and you can't skip it. We won't let you. Now, Dipper had to put the brown sticky feces all over his penis again. And boy, did he do a good job. The brown stuff was all over his external genitals and his testicles. He had cummed a few times here and there. Now, his beautiful brown genitals needed to be cleaned. But Dipper didn't have it didn't have any cleaning supplies so he had to suck that shit off he <laughs> brung his erection up to his mouth and began to suck <laughs> this Oops, no no i no <laughs> no slurp noises this time he made it very clear to lick the feces off with his tongue and as soon as the tongue reached his dick he cummed he was having the most fun he ever had in that bathroom stall and forgot who he was, where he lived, where he was, or what he was eating. All that was on his mind was his sweet cum. He just thought of a great idea. Dipper took a scoop full of diarrhea and a scoop, from, a scoop full of cum and put it in the toilet. He okay, flushed. buddy, now this time you've gone too far. He flushed it. But before it went, before it went all the way down, he grabbed the wet pile of shit and cum and stuck it in his mouth. Dipper was consuming all of the shit, cum, and toilet water, and it tasted great. He kept on doing it for God knows how long, and one of the times he hit his head against the toilet rim. Dipper's brain must have been knocked out of place at that time, because this time... Instead of putting the shit and cum in his food hole, he began to lather it on his penis again. He wanted more of his Johnson, but that would be a fatal mistake. Once... <laughs> Are you okay? Everyone all right? <laughs> I'm going slowly insane! Okay. It gets worse. <laughs> it gets so much worse. Once it was covered again, he put it in his mouth and began sucking, but did it too hard. As he was sucking and coming, he accidentally bit on his dick. As soon as he tasted the blood, he broke out of coitus and saw his lacerated penis. He saw a mix of blood and cum coming out of it like AA lava. That's actual. That's actually ah uh, uh, lava is actually a type of lava. So that's actually hilariously awesome. Serious? You put that in there. Yep. Are, are you serious? I thought I thought it was like ah uh, lava. No, <laughs> uh, no. I'm remembering this from my middle school days. I'm like, wait a second. Nope. That's uh, it's actually a type of magma slash lava. And uh... and saw his lacerated penis. He saw a mix of blood and cum coming out of it. And is a wreck. Okay, my bad. And his erectile muscle pointing out. Ooh. Dipper grabbed it and grimaced in pain. He winced at it and looked horrified. He snacked out of it all and tried to figure out a solution to the castration. That's not what... Okay. It's fine. That's, that's not okay. what castration is. That's not now, what castration is. That's fine. Now I'm starting to get grossed out. You want me to take over? No, I got no. this. He for put, worse things, Flam. He put some more diarrhea and cum on it, but that didn't stop the bleeding. No. Dipper spit out the piece of dick that he bit off and tried to <laughs> reapply it, but that but it didn't work. No matter how many times he tried to reattach it, they all failed. He put more of his reproductive fluids on the cast castration, castration, but they only made the penis swell up. Like the Goodyear blimp. Dipper was licking the blood off. They the try to stop it. But the blood was coming faster than he could lick. 
He was now in ultimate pain and felt nothing like this. He screamed as loud as he could and felt like no one could hear him. He was screaming louder and louder, saying, Help! I bit my dick off! He was going insane. He started to bang against the stall, screaming, <laughs> as loud as he could yell. After five, after a full five minutes, with a large mix of blood, cum, and feces on the floor, he was banging his head against the stall. The banging was louder than the loudest thunderstorm, and yet no one came for help. Dipper was alone in the bathroom, alone in the stall, alone with his beloved dick, now to near death, and unfortunately, he was near death. After one final blow to the head, the now screaming Dipper was now as silent as Christmas Eve. He fell to the floor, eyes turned skyward, and fell in a mix of his own blood, cum, and feces. Meanwhile, back at the mystery shack, Mabel was feeling very worried about Dipper, so he, she went off and tried to find him. She went off to the forest first. She knew where it was. And, surprisingly, got there in less time than Dipper. As she entered the newly cleaned door, she immediately noticed the once-bitten taco on one of the tables and immediately knew it was Dipper's. Mabel rushed into the men's bathroom. She liked to use the urinals. <laughs> and rushed into a random- Why is this in the story? He just- you just needed to know this. Fucking cool beans, I guess. <laughs> and rushed into a random stalls. It was her brother's. Mabel looked at how messy the stall was and how it was used to do the deed. Her pink sneakers were sticky from stepping into the reddish brown mess of fluids. She walked around the messy stall for a bit, but then saw the most horrid sight she could imagine. Dipper's corpse. Maple was welled up in tears at the sight of it and began to cry. As she was crying, she sat down in a pile of blood, feces, and cum that looked like Dipper's lifeless face. It was beautiful, as his smooth facial features complemented his circle of cum around his lips. I got this, I got this, I got this, hold on. <laughs> oh, Dipper. Mabel said through her tears. Let me clean the white stuff off of your lips. <laughs> Mabel brought Dipper's head up to hers and she kissed him. As she said in the third episode. Jesus. <sighs> Holy Freeze. shit. Okay. Did you did you glance ahead? I'm I'm just not having a great time right now, fam. <laughs> Okay. It's gonna get so much worse. <laughs> what does it ever not get worse? It it gets worse right up until like the last four paragraphs. After pulling out, I'm of serious. The, after pulling out of the kiss, Mabel enjoyed it, so she kissed him again. She didn't want to let go of Dipper, not now, not when he had just died. He was her brother after all. She held Dipper's naked corpse in her arms. She felt a tingling feeling in herself. A secret dirty side. And secret dirty side. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we just did it, right? He's dead. And no, I would know. No one would know in this restroom stall. What he literally put the word one, the the number one there that actually made infuriated me more than the rest of the story. Yeah. Phrased. Mabel thought. She immediately came up with an answer. She pulled up Dipper's head up to her head, and kissed him again. Only it was a French kiss. Blam! <laughs> <Well>, no. <laughs> Once Dipper was done. She put the body on the floor. Then Mabel got down on the fluid-covered floor, too. Mabel started to go on no. a kiss crazy frenzy with Dipper that made it look like Dipper was alive. 
tongue went into Dipper's deceased mouth, scraping the feces and cum off of the roof of Dipper's mouth. Mm. Mabel was shaking even more now <laughs> that her tongue was touching Dipper's. She unzipped her jeans, slowly slid them off, and then threw them at the wall. They stuck there from the cum. <laughs> okay, that was actually funny. <laughs> Mabel revealed her nice, clean, exposed virgin vagina. <laughs> she took <laughs> Dipper's corpse, not noticing the eternally bleeding penis, and brung it closer to her cervix. This what? is not how a cervix what? works. <laughs> this is not where a cervix is, kids. I am actually in a cold sweat right now. I tried to tell you, like, I... I... I did my due diligence, priest. I warned you. I said, get a puke bucket. I said, are you sure you can do this? And you went, yeah, pencil, I can do this. And I went, are you sure? It's a lot worse than cupcakes. It's worse than the Teletubby Snape story. Can you handle this? And you said, yeah, pencil, I can do it. I sure. I actually can't. I think I'm going to go throw up. Um, Strange, strangely, strangely, I'm largely unaffected here. Same. But, uh, so, you need me to pick it up, uh, priest? Please, please go. I need to go to the restroom. <laughs> oh, we, should we pause and wait for him to come back? Bensel. And now, from a word from our sponsors. Let him have some, oh, sure, yeah, um, I would say let him have some reprieve for the next oh section. God, all, in, a, in an odd, morbidly hilarious thing, it is actually about sponsor time. <laughs> It is about sponsor time. Let's do a quick sponsorship. Please donate to Red Wings Horse Sanctuary. Please donate to Red Wings Hank Store Sanctuary. Please donate to them. You can donate on our Patreon or donate bits. Please. We need to buy these horses some Taco Bell. How, how's the chat doing, guys? I, I don't have it up. Let me bring it up also. I am not. Bensel, any. Is the chat still alive? Yeah, is down there, and Alex is there, and Arconix is there, and uh, Sis is there. Like, there's some people there. Alex is even posting the link to our Patreon like a champ. Let's let's continue reading. That way we can get past some of the harder stuff and stuff. All right, so he ended at cervix. So you want me to yes. continue? Yes. Yes. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Should I just do this normally? Or should I try to shit post with this? Should I try to do it normally. Let's try to get through this. It's because it's gonna get worse. Okay, because I was gonna do a Gilbert Godfrey thing. No, please just <laughs> read it. Please, please just read it. Yes, she <laughs> rubbed her clitoris for, for arousal purposes. Purposes before she stuck it in, and once the dick was firmly in, she finally felt joy in her life. She loved the feeling of losing it to her dead brother's body and started to get the oddest feeling. She lost it. She finally lost it. She squealed in happiness and started to French kiss Dipper harder. Her tongue almost touched Dipper's uvula. Not vulva. Yeah, Not vulva. I, I, I thought that I'm, said vulva for a second. I was about to go, excuse me? No. I'm back. Uvula. I'm good to go. I, ex I expelled the problems. She Did kept... I throw up? Yes. She kept holding on to his lacerated dick in her vagina, and sloshing her tongue all around Dipper's mouth. She kept pulling in and out with Dipper's stick. Blood was getting on her urethra walls, not noticing one bit. That's not how urethras work! Go on. She did not want to leave the body. Not now. She would kill herself if it meant they'd be in coitus forever. If only Dipper could kiss her back. After what seemed like hours, it wouldn't fit in. Mabel finally looked down at the now pretty messed up penis. Mabel only now? Up. Only now is it messed up? Thanks, Mabel. Anyway. Mabel couldn't look away from it. It was now swollen to the size of her head. <laughs> A whole mix of rainbow colors and still spewing lifeless cum. Mabel vomited on it, which only made it worse. It grew bigger and bigger. Damn it. Dipper, ho oh, Dipper. <laughs> she said soft softly softly Softlety. Softlety. Then Mabel started to scream. She was horrified. 
fied? No. Horrified. Horrified Horror. at the sight of it and started to barf again. She tried to put a giant mix of blood, cum, vomit, and feces on the dick, but it didn't work. She tries to suck it all off, but she found herself enjoying the sucking and the taste of Dipper's <laughs> penis blood. She kept on sucking on it, tasting the blood, touching and fondling Dipper's dead erectile muscle. She was ecstatic. <laughs> She was more happy than she had ever had been. She more happy than she was before. As she was squealing with delight, the stall door started to open a, tra a crack. Mabel took notice of this. Uh -huh. She asked. The door started to open more. It wasn't locked. Mabel started to get nervous. She didn't want to go to jail for necrophilia. She was only a child. Who bit off, of, <laughs> bit off more than she could chew. Jesus mm. fucking Christ. Got him, dabs. She got too ahead of herself after lusting after her twin brother for so long. If it was the police, she had no hope. I have no hope. She hoped it was just another Taco Bell employee who would listen to her and help her out. The stall door finally burst open and standing in front of it was a man dressed in black. He had a Taco Bell logo sewn onto his left on the left of his fleece jacket. He was wearing squeaky shoes that squeaked across the bathroom floor. He was wearing dark sunglasses. He will be played by Flam. Oh boy. <laughs> the mysterious man walked up to the two of them slowly. Mabel stood up on her feet, fear and blood on her face. The man stared at Mabel for a long time until he finally said, are you supposed to be in this bathroom, young lady? Well, this is going to be an interesting reading. <laughs> Mabel was shaking in horror now. She turned to face Dipper's naked, violated, dead body and turned to face the man again. M Mister, I, I didn't int int intend to do th this to my br brother. <sighs> Mabel said, shaking with tears in her eyes. The man brought himself closer to Mabel's face. Sir, you're you're in my my p p p personal s space. Mabel tried to manage. The man was inspecting a red spot on Mabel's cheek. After several seconds, the man touched the spot, trailed his finger in it, and put the blood in his mouth, or the finger in his mouth. Bleed. <laughs> the man whispered to himself. <laughs> to say sister sir mabel asked him not understanding what he was saying little girl do you know what that is on your cheek the man asked mabel repeated what the mysterious man did to her cheek and said back to him <laughs> cut, out. cut out fuck it, it, it's b -b blood and with the blood being on your cheek, have you developed, shall we say, a desired taste for it? The man asked back. Mabel did not notice the retractable chisel in his right hand. Um, y y y y y y yes, I didn't m mean to, I j just... The man quieted her. If you like the addicting taste of it, why didn't you say so? And without warning, the man cut her across the chest with the chisel. She screamed at the pain of it. Blood started to pour out of the diagonal cut fast, almost covering her stomach. You can lick that up. Your blood probably tastes better than the kids. The man said, pointing at Dipper. Then the man gave another crot, cut across her face. She screamed again, louder this time. Okay, that's actually hurting my fucking throat, so... Just be I'm a creepy, just be creepy, because you're creepy. That's what this is, just be creepy. 
Now you can get blood close to your face and just make sure you're silent. The man then slit her across the neck. She could not scream this time. The man went into her neck and pulled out three vocal cords. This is not how it works. (laughs) The man stretched the cords out and he jumped rope with them while slashing Mabel across the face several times. When her face was cut so many times that her nose fell off, the man decided it was time for the scalping. He took out a bigger knife and slammed it right above Mabel's eyebrows. The man gripped the knife's handle still in her face and began to make a deep cut. The man put all of his strength into it because he decided to make the hardest part first. He decided to do it right on the skin, but sadly did not do the job he liked. Mabel's head was now topless and the top of her skull exposed and violently cut so that you could see her brain inside the skull. Dig! <laughs> Pieces of muscle and flesh were still a pat- attached to Mabel's hairy scalp, so the man cut them off. The scalp was now thin as skin and still full of Mabel's hair. He hung the scalp's scalp the scalp scalp up on the door the the horn on the door <laughs> let me try that sentence again please do please do he hung the scalp scalp up on the whore on the door it would be his prize something he kept for himself self-care now the man prepared for the rest of the body what he wanted to do next was to make it rain Not water, as you may think. He wanted it to rain something else. Rain blood, if you will. Oh, gosh. He got (laughs) down to Mabel's blood-covered slash chest, grabbed her not-fully-developed breasts, and began to cut off Mabel's nipples. Once he was done, blood started to come out, like old faithful geyser. He was amazed at the sight of the fountain of blood, and began to dance around in the stall, stepping in all of the fluids that were on the floor. When the floor was starting to flow, when the blood was starting to flow a little less slowly, the man moved on to the legs. The man hung Mabel's nipples next to the scalp. The nips were his prize too, and started to cut Mabel's legs. He started to cut faster than a race car driver on a smooth asphalt track. Oh my God. Are you okay, Flam? This is amazing. What the fuck? These fucking similes and metaphors are insane. I tried. I tr- I did try to warn you guys. Oh, I'm totally fine. I'm just amazed that this actually... What was someone thinking doing this? Was this to be intentionally like a offensive, not, I, well, not offensive, like provocative? Or did someone have a problem? <laughs> like, Maybe both. Maybe both. Por que no los dos? <laughs> um, Takut kept on appearing on her kneecaps until cap bone was ex- the cap bone was exposed. By that time, her lower legs and her body were only attached by a thin string of cartilage. Then the guy moved on to her toes. With the knife as sharp as knife... <laughs> Yep, that's what it says. With the knife as sharp as knife, he cut every one of her little toes off. Mabel body was losing so much blood that she started to flatten out. I don't think the editor got this far. The place where it was mostly coming out of was her toes. The toe- um, not, pr- not priest. Priest, the reason there's so many errors is because his other hand is busy. <laughs> oh, God. I was doing so good up until now. Now I'm a little sick again. (laughs) The toe blood was making a sea of red on the floor. The man, now with his Taco Bell fleece jacket splattered with red on it, now dug the knife into Mabel's left foot. He began to make another cut, similar to what he did to her scalp, and began to cut this skin off of the foot. The cut was much better than what he did to the scalp. He did the same to the other foot, 
and then hung the skin up next to the scalp. Mabel's feet were now just a big mess of flesh, muscle, blood, and nerves. Mabel, who was still alive's face, was now completely exposed to all the cuts she was getting. She mouth was she mouth was hanging open like a gaping person. The blood was already covering her chest. Since the man actually had a soul. I'm sorry. Are you, do you do you do you need someone to take over for a little while? No, I was laughing. You <laughs> man, since the man actually had a soul, yeah. Okay. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Okay, <clears throat> the blood was already covering her chest, and since the man actually had a soul, he didn't want to subject the little girl to the misery she was about to endure. So he took the long knife and stabbed it in the middle of her chest where her heart was. Blood poured out of it more than her cut-off nipples did. Is the chat okay? Like, 8th uh, eighth, eighth says, every night I can feel Dipper's penis and Mabel's uvula, even the feces and the sanity I have lost. Eighth, hold me. Mark just says, "Eat his penis." What? Um. <sighs> do, you, do you want? Do you want Flam to take over? No, for a I, lo while? I lost my spot. Okay. Once blood... most of the blood. Once most of the blood was done spewing, the man got down Mabel's bloody vagina. Oh God! What are we doing now? He very carefully took his knife got down near the cervix, and sucked the knife's blade up the hole. While Mabel's- what? While in Mabel's cock cave, <laughs> the oh, man God. was rotating the knife, cutting up the walls of Mabel's egg chamber. <laughs> the, the tip of it finally got inside it, and very carefully- <laughs> Snipped every one of Mabel's fall fallopians. There you go. I want to say, how many fallopians, quote unquote, do you think a person has, author? Seven. This many. Okay. Okay. It was a hard job. But somebody's got to do it. Got to do it! Stop. <laughs> hot. It's hot. Dirty and jobs, is episode two. Yeah. He had to be very channel. careful. He had done it many times before, but today wasn't his best day. He accidentally slit some of the sides of Mabel's vagina, cutting it into the muscles surrounding it. The man was very embarrassed. Well, shit. Hopefully no one will notice that. He said to himself. He took the night out of Mabel's hole with ovaries and two fallopians on the blood-covered blade. The man got out a big plastic trash bag and scraped the knife on it, making the contents on it go into the bag. But since the knife's handle was covered in more blood than it usually was, he accidentally let it split and it dug into Mabel's right shoulder. Oh, shit. Sorry. Perfect. The man said ominously. The man got out a pair of vinyl gloves and put them on his hands. He gripped the knife tightly, wanting a deeper cut than he had before. After a while, after digging and digging and digging, the man's knife got throt to the other side. Once the man saw the job he did... He threw the arm in his in his trash bag. He felt great pride and felt that he could easily achieve his goal now. So he went to the other side of Mabel's nearly skinned body and began to cut that arm off. Is priest, priest, eighth says, "I'll hold you only if you don't make it weird like last time." Deal. <laughs> it was harder to do than the other one, surprisingly. And once he was done with that, he threw that arm into the garbage bad bag. I think it's a garbage bad. Oh, this is garbage bad. No, you're right. This is garbage bad. 
I mean, it made you throw up. It gave Flam a fucking asthma attack. I'm over here just crying. It's great. And Enigma is sitting in a room with his mother, probably trying to just, like, deal with life. We're not sitting in the same room. Your Across niece. the hall from? She's in the neighboring room. Okay, I'm... there we go. <sighs> Mabel's body was now almost flat. Not because of her age, but due to all the blood loss. The man Priest, was... that additional line. Priest, you should feel bad for that. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you do that? <laughs> the man tasted some of it and thought that he could he should get a jar for later. Now for the legs. The man did the same with her legs, and they felt like they were getting easier to cut off each time. The legs were off! And the, ban and the man threw it in the bag. Mabel's body was flat now. Almost all the blood from her body was gone. Embracing Mabel's dismembered body, he hugged it, licked the remaining blood off, and put the body in the bag. The man, now, had just noticed Dipper on the floor and figured, he must have caused all this on the walls. Okay. So oh, I I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Oh, it's all good. He had just noticed Dipper on the floor and figured, since that shit's destroying my throat, I'm going to change again. Fucking, uh, hmm, yes, he must have caused all this on the walls. Yeah. Another one couldn't hurt, see? The man said to himself and started to cut off Dipper's appendages. He did it in the same order and manner, same manner as Mabel's. It was done quickly and put all of it in the bag as well. Now it was time to clean up. And as you can imagine, the bathroom stall was still a big mess of fluids and Mabel's still stuck pants on the wall. <laughs> At this point, you've just lost your mind and you're adding things. At this point, you've snapped. Am I right? I, I have basically snapped. I, I, I am in a cold sweat. I don't feel pain or feeling anymore. And um, I don't desire alcohol anymore. I'm only reading. I'm only reading. I, I exist to read. And the story is not over yet. And I am still reading. <laughs> Leave your body, priest. We're so close. You can do this. I believe in you. Please don't think about the fact that someone is still fapping to this on our YouTube channel. Oh. <laughs> the man got out a big chisel and started to chisel the cum off of the walls and into the bag. It took a long while, about two or three hours. Once it was done, he needed to clean the floor. So he went outside the stall and got a mop that he had with him the whole time. <laughs> he mopped the whole mess of things up off the floor and into the bag until the floors and wall looked respectable. For a fast food bathroom, anyway. The man got out some toilet cleaner and cleaned the toilet because it was way more messier than the stall itself. After a few minutes, the toilet cleaning was over and the stall was as clean as a new car and smelled like it too. The man left the bathroom and the stall waited, ready for its next victim. That actually would have been a great ending, but it keeps going. Yes, it does! The man got out of the bathroom and went into the back kitchen of the Taco Bell. He got near a machine. It was an odd looking machine. It had a crank on the side, a funnel on the top, and something shaped like a taco on the side near a conveyor belt. Oh, right. Am. Right. Ah, why do I gotta do everything by myself? The man questioned. He hung up his bloodstained jacket and sunglasses, revealing his Taco Bell employee uniform. It was oh. spotless. The man took the bag and one by one started to put the body parts into the funnel. Once the bag was half empty, he kept putting more parts in. Only this time, he turned the crank. Once the bag was empty, he popped out two tacos. They weren't really tacos, really. 
they were actually human body parts in the shape of tacos. They went down the conveyor belt and the employee, using spray cans, began to spray paint the body parts. Once they got the Taco Bell tissue paper, once they got to the Taco Bell tissue paper at the end of the conveyor belt, they looked like genuine tacos. The man grabbed one of the tacos, wrapped it in tissue paper, and went to the front of the counter. He handed it to the old man cashier, then went back into the depths of the kitchen. Enigma, Enigma. it's your time, Enigma. I'm the cashier? Yeah. Yes, remember the old man cashier who was screaming, we only have tacos? Two months ago. Yeah. Two months ago. Here's your taco, sir. The cashier said to the fat customer. You're welcome. <laughs> Sue said, handing the cashier the money. The end. Send those fuckers into the stratosphere. Can I die now? I I feel like I'm dead. We all, we all just want to die, okay? I feel okay, actually, and I'm, she, I'm more concerned for me. I know that's... she roped us into this. Concerned for Flam only when I heard the sound of hacking and coughing in the background. No, I wasn't puking. I was laughing at the fucking oddly placed, well thought out imagery. Just thought you were having an asthma attack. I, I was largely unaffected by this because I read a very gory comic. It's fair, but even then, like, I only just special. Asking, I'm only just asking questions. Like, did this guy do this to be intentionally provocative? Yeah, just to see how far how far I could take this. It must be. <laughs> Now, class, what was the moral of the story? Maybe, or maybe he just really hates Gravity Falls. No, and, he and really he hates. Bell. He really hates Taco Bell. Like that's yeah, the moral Taco of the story. <laughs> He's just, he had such a shitty taco one time. They gave him such food poisoning. He's just like, you know what? I got an idea tonight. Um, I think this wins the award for the hardest to read story we've ever done on Shitface Chick Fix. Um, I, I could see that. And just, just remember, remember that Alex Hirsch has read this. So it's canon. So I can't yeah. walk up to Alex Hirsch with, with a bag of Taco Bell and say, here's your taco, sir. You, you absolutely cannot and should not do this to Alex Hirsch. No. I think that's fair. I don't want to do it. Well, you read it and you only vomited once, priest. Well, I could pretend I never read the story, and then I'll just say, someone over there told me to hand this to you, and they said you wanted it. Yeah, and he looks over it, it's me and Priest. Yeah. Just that, giving him thumbs ups. That's the first time I ever vomited on a shit face shit fic. Genuinely. Yeah, I, I, I really, really did. It was mostly acid, because I haven't had anything other than breakfast today, but... Oh, you need to eat, my dude. I, I, I don't want to eat now. I... I'm over here considering if I should finish the other half of my burrito. Oh my god, were you eating Taco Bell? No, not Taco Bell. Uh, what taco? Uh, some local place. No, it was a taco, it was a burrito. Well, I know, but what taco place I meant. Um, that's fantastic. So, let's each, let's each give a brief closing statement, because we're gonna end early, so we can all take a break. Let's each give a, oh, a brief, brief closing statement about feel how we feel how we're doing what our response to the story is a message to the author just a response can we all do that i want to see a 10 page essay on why this this is a metaphor for the heat death of the universe i mean that's fair on Flam? my desk tomorrow morning Flam? i'm I'm okay. I'm I'm just left with more questions than answers. And and now we've all heard Flam say the words, "I bit my dick off." Help. So that's a thing. Uh, gee, I hope no one cap. I hope no one crops that and uh, uses it out of context. I, that's a ringtone. What, really, what I really wanted to happen, Flam, is when you yelled that, like you're, some family concerned family member of yours comes running, bursting into your room. Okay. Oh. That would have actually been funny. Priest, priest. You know, you walk out the door, 
You see someone that you know, and they ask you how you are, and you just have to say you're fine. <laughs> when you're not really you're fine, not fine, but you can't get into it because they would never understand. You you made that happen to me. Thank you. So, so, so are you fine? No. <laughs> And uh, I gotta say, I, I I never wanted to do this. I suggest this regularly as a joke because I traumatized Milk with it. I never expected us to actually do it. And now we have, and I'm alive, and I'm going to drink so much. But it'll never be enough to purge this from my mind. So thank Milky. you for that. I love that. I love that Milk said, yeah, no, you should really do it. And really encouraged it on the week he was off. <laughs> 